This is a starter gear for my ATV. I got it uh, really cheaply because it wasn't starting and the problem was with this starter gear. You can see that the teeth are worn down, the teeth are gone. Here I'm trying to repair them. Uh, I welded up the teeth that were broken to get them uh, back into shape and then um, I filed them down, get them to be same as they were before. This was a really hard uh, process. Apparently it's really hard to weld cast iron. Here's the starter motor. You can see that the gears are also stripped. They're way smaller, the very top of the axle, because they're stripped. They've been stripping against this uh, starter gear. I did the same process with the starter motor, uh, welded up the teeth and then tried to use a file. Here I welded it to try and repair those teeth. But uh, yeah, it's really hard to do that. The welds doesn't stick that well. I used the angle grinder a bit because it was hard to reach with the file here. Here's the result. It looks better, but it's not so good. I tried it in the ATV. It's not much of an improvement. It's still jumping teeth and they break down because they're not perfectly matched. So they actually break. So I gave up on that because it was way too hard. Here I'm gonna continue to remove stuff from the ATV because I wasn't sure if there were other stuff that was broken. So I'm uh, opening up the engine and to be able to get the flywheel off I welded this special thing that go around the nut in there because it was really hard to reach that nut. Probably need a special tool to get inside there. So I welded this thing and it worked pretty pretty well. This is one of the steering rod things for the ATV. It actually fit into the shaft here so I could use it as a pulley. You could say when I force this one in it pushes out the flywheel. Here's the head of the motor. I'm trying to take it off and there are bolts inside the frame here which some are really hard to reach. There is a piece of iron going on top of that bolt in the corner there. I couldn't reach it which was pretty annoying so I had to come up with a solution to get that bolt out. I drilled into the this metal thing in the same size as my tool so I could get this uh, tool in there. That worked out really well. So this is one of the inlets, whatever you call it, for the ATV. And this is the one for full throttle, I believe. You can see that you can see through it. This one is seem to be functional. This one is clogged, it seems. I can't see through it. So I need to clean this out. So I have this really thin wire here. And I just put it in so it comes out through the other side and just yeah, let it go through. Like rotate it. And now I believe you can see through this one. Yeah, you can see the hole there. So this one is now clean and this one looked fine. It was filled with like fuel I think. Now I like cleared it with compressed air and you can see it's pretty open big one. Then we have the small one. Small, big. So yeah, they're ready to go back in the carburetor. Right there, the small one is in here. Now this thing should be getting fuel, I think it wasn't getting fuel before. So that one is, those are in, they are now should be working. Because I didn't get the starter motor to work with the broken gears, the next plan is to use this tool thing and weld it onto the starter gear. This tool had a perfect fit onto the starter gear, so it was centered and I just welded it on there. Then I can take this welded tool with the starter gear and put it where it's supposed to be. And if I rotate the tool, I will rotate the engine just like the starter motor would do. So now I'm connecting up the cables to the battery so I can uh, test and see if I can get the motor to make spark or to start using the cordless drill. 
with this new uh, adapter thing that I just welded. I just fit it onto the tool like this. I have this socket that fits on the tool. The tool is welded to the starter gear. The drill can spin the motor just fine until it comes to the compression stage. Then it just stops because it's not strong enough. This is a cheap drill that's not that powerful. I did several attempts, but I could never get it to start and get past the compression stage with this drill. I tried another drill that I have that is connected with a wire. It seemed to perform better, it had more speed and could get the motor past the compression stage. But in the process it broke very quickly. Inside the drill there were gears that were stripped and the drill would not spin correctly. Without load it could move, but as soon as you applied load to it, it would have problems with the stripped gears. So after that I realized I didn't have anything strong enough to start the motor. Stay tuned for next part, where I will investigate this further and uh, try and get this ATV to start. Around two years ago I started uh, uploading videos to YouTube more on a regular basis. At first the goal was to make one video every month uh, and I've been doing that for two years now. But now I wanna step it up and try and do two videos every month. The biggest reason for me to do videos and upload them to YouTube, the biggest motivation is uh, when someone watches my video and they like my videos. To help me keep motivated doing more videos. The best thing that you as a viewer can do is to comment on my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel and share my videos to other people you think might like them. I have some exciting projects coming up. For example, this car behind me, which is having a completely different power system than a regular car. That's gonna be quite exciting. I'm making videos of almost everything I do with this car. There are other projects coming as well. Stay tuned and subscribe to see those uh, projects coming.